Hi, welcome to the virtual day at the zoo. So I'm Pierre, I'm deputy head of the reptile and amphibian department. And today I'm going to show you uh, what we do here in our department and especially with that room which is dedicated to the Mauritian animal rescue. So recently in September, unfortunately, uh, a ship, the Wakashio, wrecked into the southern coast of um, Mauritius and contaminated a lot of small islands. And for that reason, we worked with the Mauritian government to rescue some of these animals, to transfer some into Jersey here, and try to breed them, to maintain them, to make sure that these populations can survive. It's not necessarily that we will save the species with these few animals, but we will maintain this genetic diversity, because they are really specific to the small islands they are from, and we want to be able to maintain it for the future. Yeah, here we have all three species we've imported with the lesser night geckos, which are by pairs in these tanks. We here have the Bhutan kings, and towards the other side, we have the Borgia kings, which are kept individually. Um, so far, we've been really, really successful in breeding these animals, which somehow tend to be a little bit problematic because of the space. So we started having a few babies coming up. We were able to set here in that room, but after a couple of months, we had to break through the wall to extend our room and have more space. So for now, it's still empty in most of it, but we have um, that middle shelf, which is covered, where we have 12 animals per shelf, plus uh, some baby um, nectar, so some baby lesser uh, night geckos. So we have many, many of them, and we have also all these shelves to be able to expand and have them into bigger, larger enclosures. So for now, it looks like very small boxes, obviously. Uh, it's far from their habitat. But we want to make sure we can maintain the best parameters possible. And it's somehow, sometimes easier to maintain it in a smaller environment. We can make sure they do grow well, they eat well, they are developing properly. And if we keep them in two large enclosures or in group, we cannot monitor every single individual. And it's really important for us to be able to monitor all of them because they are really precious. If these guys do not make it, in long term, in 10, 15 years, we might lose a species in Mauritius. So it's really, really important for us to, to make sure we can keep them safe. And in parallel, we have our colleagues in Mauritius who are monitoring the species on the island. They have already noticed a very important drop in the populations on these small islands because of the, the oil spill. And the Obviously, the, the purpose of all that project is not for us to keep them. First of all, they do not belong to Jersey Zoo. They still belong to the Mauritian government. We are here to help them, to help these animals. And to try to maintain them and even grow the population, obviously, we, we try to, to breed them as much as possible, but also maintaining a good genetic diversity. We don't want to mess up what's here. And for it, we, at the moment, do some uh, Eastern, uh, Easter egg hunts. So on a regular basis, we go through the female enclosures or the pair enclosures, and we try to find the eggs. So it can be really tricky because we are not looking for chicken eggs. We are looking for very, very tiny eggs. And here, you can see we have the lesser night gecko eggs, and they are just about five millimeter diameter. They are really tiny little things. We do incubate them on um, cotton wool, keep them dry, but with some humidity in the air so they can progressively develop. And it can be really long. We have tiny baby geckos that hatch after over a hundred days. So it's really long for such a small animal to develop. And we also go through the Borgia's King eggs, which are somehow really funny because they do change a lot in terms of size. Soon after we find them, they are pretty small. And after about two months, they have increased in size really 
importantly. So it's really impressive to see how they progressively develop and we can also like that see when they are just about to hatch. It helps uh, for us. And it's really uh, challenging and also really, really interesting for us because these species have never been kept in captivity. I mean, apart from the lesser night geckos which were kept here in Doral uh, a few years ago, but the Bhutan skinks or the Bojia skinks have never been kept in captivity. So everything we do is new. We have to find out everything about these animals to make sure we can keep them alive and not only keep them alive, but having them striving, reading, and in the future, hopefully a near future, being able to go back to Mauritius. So here we have the oldest uh, Bojia skinks, and I mean, oldest that hatch here in, in Jersey. Yeah? So they are all captive bred, and hopefully they, they will discover the wide in a, in a few years, when they will be already fully grown, uh, because they do grow really, really fast. And I've just serviced them to make sure they have all the water they need. And now I'm going to feed them. So every day we give them some uh, insects to eat, some invertebrates, which are supplemented because we obviously have a much more restricted uh, diversity in terms of food here in Jersey. But we also try to have as many as we can breed. So we have three species of crickets, we have some wood lice, some weevils, two species of weevils. We have uh, drosophila, some fruit flies. And we try to change as much as possible because we don't want them to be only used to one kind of food. And when they get back to Mauritius, they can't find it. So they won't eat. So it's really important for us to, to make sure they, they go on to different preys. And it's also much, much more healthy for them, obviously. It's like for us. The more diversity, the better. Yep, you can, yeah. See that one is. So for us to make sure they develop properly and also for the general knowledge, since, as I mentioned, it's the first time they're kept in captivity, we weigh and measure them on a regular basis, so once a month. We place them in a transparent box, so we don't have to restrain them. And uh, we can... Uh, measure them, so snout to, to the base, uh, from the tip of the snout to the base of the tail and the length of the tail as well. And we weigh them. And when they hatch, they are about not even a half a gram. And now some of them are over a gram, so they've been growing really well. So in that box, I have a, a baby uh, lesser night gecko also from the rescue obviously we've started to breed them really well as, as well but obviously they do it so everything that comes in has to come out so we have to clean up uh, on a regular basis but we try to limit it as much as possible these animals are really sensitive really really small when they hatch they are just about two centimeter long and um, not even a gram, they are only 0.2 grams, so it's really small and really sensitive again. So, as I said, they are so small that their claws are so tiny that they can catch everything, even on a, what appears to be a smooth surface, they can climb. So they can't climb onto ceilings or walls like over geckos, but they are so small that even the lime scale on the plastic surface is plenty enough for them to have a grip on. So that's why I'm going to change the cards from that box into a, a larger one. So if it jumps out, it's still <laughs> into a bigger box. So obviously in the wild, they don't live in uh, egg crates, but they do live in rock crevices. However, for us, it would be too dangerous for these geckos. We can't have rocks that we have to move on a regular basis. So if we move the box and the rocks just move a, a little bit, they could smash uh, these poor animals. So what we want is something fairly light, fairly stable, and really good for us and for them because it creates small crevices where the geckos can hide, can hold the humidity really well. So it's really, really useful. 
So here we have a gecko which is um, just three weeks old, so it's really young. Well, not even three weeks old, actually. So if I place my finger, you can see it is really tiny eh? and really fast. <laughs> really, really fast. Good. Thank you for following us and I hope you enjoy the visit of that special room dedicated to the Mauritian animals and I hope you will enjoy the rest of your day with a virtual day at the zoo.